bad dreams, huh? It seems so real. Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. The Archdemon, is that the dragon? I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. Thank you, Alistair. I appreciate it. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. You little no. what what your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Oh, good boy. Teach that silly Alistair a lesson. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I just don't touch his food. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Don't listen to Alistair. He's just full of rubbish. Hey! Kind of Alistair. What do you need? Can I ask you something? Ask away. I don't know much about the Grey Wardens, and I feel like I'm moving blind. Can you tell me more about them? Such as they are. So where are the nearest Grey Wardens from here, exactly? That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlay, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the free marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Great Wardens in other lands. Then mm. is there a headquarters somewhere else? Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfelds, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. Ah, uh, so what happens now that there's just the two of us? I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden, and even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the Blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. Will we need to start rebuilding the Order? I mean, eventually we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining, or what's involved. I know it involves Lyrium and some other magic, and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. Mm. Okay, well, I suppose that's all my questions. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. <laughs> Fair enough. What do you need? So, I can ask you something else, then? Ask away. I just wanted to know, how did you become a Grey Warden? Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it, and pass out. 
You haven't forgotten already, have you? Ha ha, very funny. I do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see, I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. You don't really seem like the religious sort, though. You're telling me I was banished to the kitchens to scour the pots more times than I can count. And that's a lot. I, I can count pretty high. <laughs> the Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. Why did the Grand Cleric want to keep you if you wanted to go so badly? I wondered that myself. It's not as if she valued me highly. I think she just didn't want to give anything to the Grey Wardens, is all. The Chantry didn't lose much. And I think I can do more fighting the Blight anyhow, rather than sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have. He was a good man. He was. A good man who didn't deserve his fate. That much, I'm sure of. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. Yes? Hi, Liliana. I, I just wanted to talk to you a bit. Well, here I am. So, what was life like in the Chantry Cloister? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. Mm, that's why I'm not particularly fond of them. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Mm. I think I prefer your ideas to the ideas of the Chantry. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Why are we stopping? We're working together, and I think I should just get to know you better. There are darkspawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? I... Stan, I need to know if I can trust you at my back. I am Kunari. I have given my word to aid you. We are not people of idle promises. But why did you offer to help me? For the moment, you are the enemy of my enemy. For the moment? Yes. I am Kunari. As long as you do not make yourself my enemy, I will aid you. I can promise nothing else. Hmm. Well, I've never seen Kunari before. Can you tell me something of your people so that maybe I understand? No. <laughs> what? P please? People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. <laughs> excel at poverty. Oh. You're being a little hostile, aren't you? Many humans have said that to me. I do not understand it. If I were indeed hostile, you would be bleeding. <laughs> so this is you being calm and helpful? Couldn't you tell? Uh, how, how about something else? I mean, you t already told me you were in the army. Can you tell me more about that? I am. And what made you to decide that you wanted to be a soldier? Decide. I am a Sten of the Beresad. I did not choose to be who I am any more than you did. Hmm. So why would the Kanari send soldiers here? The Antam are the eyes, hands, and mouth of the Kunari. We are how my people know the world. That doesn't really answer my question. No, I didn't. Are you always this stubborn? Yes. There is no point to this. We are keeping the Darkspawn waiting. Fine, just tell me this. Are you all right? You were in that cage for weeks. You are concerned. 
No need. I am fit enough to fight. Okay. I guess we should get moving then. As you wish. <sighs> Morgan. Let's see if she's ready to go. What do you wish of me? I just wanted to chat. If you must. So, did you grow up in the Kakari Wilds? Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? Uh, you could if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what luck. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. Mm, but you kept coming back to the wilds, though. Would you not do the same? Your world is an unforgiving and cold place. The wilds I hail from is home to me and I a natural denizen. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be... overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. Mm, very daring. That does sound like you. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be traveling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl and naturally he was arrested. That was quick thinking. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? Touching? Like, you mean like a handshake? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. <laughs> There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes, mm, how to eat at a that. table, how to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told, but then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Well, I'm happy that you decided to come along with us. Yes? Let's ignore the entire Darkspawn threat and the presence of a simpleton as your only other Grey Warden ally, then. Not that I lack appreciation for the intent of your comment. Thank you. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fennec, at your service, once again. I saw your camp and remembered the kind offer that you made the last time we met. And is there anywhere safer for a poor merchant and his son to sleep? I think not. I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Uh, you're free to stay. I'm, we won't be around that long. Wonderful. Thank the kind lady, won't you, boy? Thank you, kind lady. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. All right. Well, what do we got? You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. Hmm. Let me see your wares, Bodan. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. to make this, but I'll get one just in case. I kind of want to give everyone a gift before we leave. It's like, welcome to the party kind of thing.
enchantment. Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a... What was it now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. So what enchantments do you do, Sandal? He can fold lyrium into almost any weapon or piece of armor, though naturally some of the more extravagant materials will take more lyrium than others. It's a process that some of the master smiths back in Orzammar will perform, but my boy here is just as adept at it. Isn't that right, boy? Enchantment! And there you have it. All right, well, I want some enchantments done then. Enchantment! Enchantment? Can you enchant this other thing? Enchantment! Welcoming gifts. I could get used to this, you know. I... That's a wonderful thought. I don't know what to say. Unexpected. Thank you. A fine gift. You have my thanks. Are you sure I can't interest you in this hat? A pair of earrings, perhaps? A cheese knife? Uh, let me see your wares, please. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. Probably good for him. You know, he's still recovering from his injury. Get to that later. Oh, stranger. You're a hard woman to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins? Levy the trader? You know Duncan? Oh, yes, for years. Considered him a friend, I did. But here I am, carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. How did you know Duncan? 
It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Maker's breath, I'm a bit nervous. Honoured to be here, really. Go ahead and tell your tale. After King Marek freed us from the Orlesians, the Grey Wardens begged the King's permission to come into Ferelden. Some sort of internal business. Me and a mess of other Warden sympathizers spoke on behalf of your order. Tan Logain was very much against letting all Legion Wardens in the kingdom. But Marek, Andraste, bless him, was a fair-minded monarch and he let them in. Go on, I'm listening. So that's why I was there when the Wardens and their leader Genevieve presented herself to the King. The first Wardens in Ferelden in over a century. Proudest state of my life that was. Duncan was a bit of a scamp back then. We were of an age and struck up a friendship. The King himself went with the Wardens on their mysterious business. When he returned, he rescinded King Aldland's decree, and the Wardens came back to Ferelden for good. Mm. Well, it's hard to believe that Duncan was a scamp, but he certainly was an easy man to like. <sighs> that he was. So what promise did Duncan make to you? My family, well, passed a bit checkered to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last Warden Commander of Ferelden back when the Wardens were known as Freeloaders. So King Arlen banished the Wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. And that seems a bit drastic, though, doesn't it? And then some. Not much is known about that time. After King Arlen died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. So what favor did you ask of Duncan then? I asked for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honor. Hmm, I've never heard of Soldier's Peak. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honor. So why didn't Duncan help you at the time? Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar, said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. Well, let's add Soldier's Peak to the list of destinations then. A thousand blessings upon you, Warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Take Sten, but I don't want to have three warriors in a party. So let's go Indeed. Morgan and Liliana. And at first, we're going to head to Redcliffe. Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. I'm not going to like this, am I? I don't know. I doubt it. I've never liked it, that's for sure. Well, uh, let's see. How do I tell you this? We're almost at Redcliffe. Did I say how I know Arl Eamon, exactly? No, now that you mention it, you never did say. I'm a bastard. My mother was a serving girl at Redcliffe Castle, and she died when I was born. Our Lehman took me in and raised me before I was sent to the Chantry. The reason he did that was because... 
well, because my father was King Marek, which made Kaelin my half-brother, I suppose. Hmm. So you're not just a bastard, but a royal bastard then? Ha! <laughs> yes, I guess it does it, that. <laughs> I should use that line more often. I, I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. I think I understand. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got special treatment for it anyhow. Al Eamon eventually married a young woman from Orlais, despite all the problems it caused with the king so soon after the war. He loved her a great deal. Anyway, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as the Arl's bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. What an awful thing to do to a child. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence. I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall. And it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. You were young. And raised by dogs. Or I may as oh, well right. have been the way I acted. But maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Isle is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Kaelin's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Great Wardens. As you command, my prince. Oh, lovely. I'm going to regret <laughs> this. Somehow I just know it. I thought I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? What do you mean? Is there a problem? So you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? I've heard Arl Eamon is sick, if that's what you mean. He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. Apparently everyone seems to agree that a blight is the perfect time to start killing each other. Marvelous, really. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I, I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother, he's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainersphere, brother to the Arl. I remember you, Ban Tegan. 
Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It you. is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news! Still alive, yes. Though not for long if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. You don't believe Loghain's lies? What, that he pulled his men in order to save them? That Caelan risked everything in the name of glory? <laughs> Hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the King. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So you are a Grey Warden as well. A pleasure to meet you. I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. What evil things are you talking about? Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses, returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. What are you talking about? Of course we'll help. How pointless to help these villagers fight an impossible battle. One would think we had enough to contend with elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. I'm on my way. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. You're a Grey Warden, right? Were you in Ostagar? In the Kokari Wilds? My husband and son went there to bring the Chant of Light to the Chastened. But I haven't heard from them since. Oh no. Are, are you Jeddah? I am. You've heard of me? I have something here from your husband. Oh? Oh, his lockbox! If you're bringing me this... Oh no. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for bringing this to me. It means a lot to... Make his blessings upon you. I'm so scared, Father. What are we going to do? Silence, girl. Sorry. Am I bothering you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. Are you all right? Why are you crying besides the obvious? Those... Those things dragged my mother away. I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her screaming all the time. Everywhere. How terrible, you poor thing. I wish there was something we could do to help. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. Why would he run off? Do you know? He said something about saving mother. He's just a little boy. He doesn't understand she's gone. If he has foolishly run off, then he is no doubt dead. You should get used to that fact. Nice. Maybe you want to kick her in the head while you're at it. Shall we comfort her with lies? If she is to face death, better she face it honestly. I hope he didn't try to go to the castle. Oh, that would be awful. Don't worry, I'll be sure to look for him. You will? Thank you so much. Please find him. But night is coming. The monsters will return and we sit here and wait for them. Sorry, Sal. This looks really good. 
We have no choice. Oh we my gosh. Get out. I'm just trying to get past you, bro. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. I just hope everything will be all right. I'm scared, Mother. Don't when are the bad men coming? Ride. Soon, darling. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. I want to go home. Where's Father? Let us pray. Why can't we go home? Blessed art thou who exists in the Maker's sight. Why haven't Mother Blessed and art thou who seeks here? his forgiveness. They're, they're gone, dear boy. Gone on a long trip. When will May the chant be reach the Maker's ears I don't and tell like him of our contrition. Everybody gets really scared. <laughs> We don't have the men we need, and their numbers just keep growing each night. Well, sure, they take the day, and they, you know... I don't want to think about... Still no sign of them coming back from the castle, Murdoch. Tell them to maintain watch. I don't want to... So you're the Grey Warden, are you? I didn't think they made women Grey Wardens. And why would you think that? For more reasons than you care to hear, I bet. Still, there's no reason to think Bantigan's lost his mind. We aren't gonna turn aside anyone who wants to help, though. Don't take me for being an ingrate or nothing. Well, we do want to help however we can. You can trust us. Name's Murdoch, mayor of what's left of the village, providing we aren't all killed and hauled off to the castle tonight. Have faith. We will defeat the evil together. I hope you're right. I really do. Anyhow, you're here, and they tell me you're in charge. What can I do to help? We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. Why does Owen refuse to talk to you? His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids, so he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. And nobody else can do these repairs? Not by nightfall, and not well enough that I'd be happy to test it in combat. If there were others, don't you think I'd ask them? All right. Well, is there anything else you need? We could use some extra bodies. Having a veteran like Dwin in the militia would help a lot, but he flat out refuses. Tell me about Dwin. He's a trader, a dwarf. Lives near the lake. Locked himself up in his home with some of his workers, he has. Says he doesn't need any of us. We could use somebody with his fighting experience, but he won't come out. Well, carry on then. Right. Let's hope we see morning. Kind of sick of Morgan not approving my choices, so Lost and damnation. Yes. Just for a while. His warrior experience could help us here too. Go away. Curse you! Leave me in peace! You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Is this Owen the blacksmith? I need to speak with you. Oh? Huh? Who is that? What do you want? I've been through enough. I'd prefer not to speak through a door. Can I come in? Certainly not. I don't know you and I don't want to. Off you go. Please, I, I just want to talk to you. Hmm. All right, all right. But I don't know why you're so determined. Here, I'll get the locks. Make his breath. What is that smell? It's like someone set a brewery on fire. Somebody's been drinking. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? My name is Lyra, a Grey Warden helping Van Tegan. 
A Grey Warden, is it? <laughs> it takes all kinds. Funny, you didn't sound like a dwarf through the door. Can't say I expected that. Anyhow, my name's Owen, though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? The militia needs your help desperately. Why should I help Murdoch when he won't help me? Hmm? My girl, Valena. She's one of the Alessa's maids and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me or the village or anyone. Or you could work to help save her. I'm an old man. Everyone knows we aren't making it through the night. Or are you going to save us? I intend to try. Is that so? Hm. Maybe it's the drink talking, but you almost sound like you believe that. Tell you what. If you want me to do repairs for Murdoch and his men, promise me you'll go into the castle and find my daughter. I'll do my best. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damned thing, and I didn't believe him either. I want to promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. Fine. I promise you I'll find her. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. Is this a promise we will not keep? What's this? I said nothing to you, human. Ooh. Right then. It seems I have some work to do relighting the forge, and I suppose I'll have to find some iron. Hmm, maybe at the mill. Oh, Murdoch just better send his men here as soon as possible if I'm going to get to all these repairs and get them done by nightfall. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. Maybe I shouldn't have switched out for again. <laughs> Too bad. Hey, I see you found my hiding place. I stuck some old equipment in there before Murdoch could get his hands on it. I don't think there's anything you'll need in there. But it's hard to say. I was in a bit of a rush when I filled it up. Couldn't the militia use this? Not if I'm going to repair the equipment they have. That stuff is old, anyhow. Yeah, let me open it for you. I have the key. Going. Here I am. Yana, I can just make sure. Oh, it's not holding out. Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. I apologize. I, I don't mean any harm. Apology accepted. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now get out. What are you doing shut up in here? Surviving. We have supplies to last for quite some time. And my boys and I can swing a weapon better than any of those fools out there. You'll die in here just as easily as you would out there. Thanks. But I'll take my chances in here. Everyone else can run around in the open waiting to die. Hmm. Can I change your mind? Hmm. And I have to admit, you have a better chance than most. At least another dwarf is likely to have a few rocks to rub together between their ears. What do you have in mind, then? Let's hear it. 
Hmm. Well, I can't really tell anybody about gold anymore. How about gold? I'll hire, I'll hire you to fight for the village. Are you serious? Yes, I am. I won't even stick my head out my door for less than a hundred silvers. I can't go higher than fifty. Do I look like an elf? I'm not that cheap. <laughs> so it's a hundred, or it's no deal. Yikes. All right. Fine, I'll pay it. You're getting off easy there. But like you say, I guess this town needs a hero. You better be out there too when the sun goes down. I'm not fighting for a lost cause, you hear me? I'm off. Whatever's inside the dresser, come out now. Go away. This isn't your home. A small human. I say burn it out. <laughs> ah, what are you doing? All right, I'll come out. Please, don't hurt me. I'll go back to the Chantry if you want. I didn't mean any harm. Your sister is looking for you, you know. I just... Didn't want to be at the Chantry anymore. Everyone's scared, and I want to be brave. How is hiding in a dresser being brave? I wasn't always in here. I hid when I heard you coming. I was... Well, I shouldn't tell you. It's a secret. Are you sure? Maybe I can help you. No. I won't tell you. And you can't make me. You can't. Disapproving of good choices. Party needs to get it together. Check out the second person. Stop fishing. Chantry. You are a priest? No, no. I was a lay sister of the Chantry. Which means? I lived and worked in the Chantry, but I did not take any vows. So you 
dabbled in priesthood. A word from the castle? No, all is still, as it has been for days. And it is an unnatural stillness, as though there is naught in there but death. Say no more. The R lives, and I will not listen to your inauspicious chatter. Make her watch over us all in this, what may be our final hour. Oh, it's sort of like coming home again, but with more undead. Greetings, Grey Warden. I am as relieved as Ban Tegan is to see you here. I must admit I am unfamiliar with addressing a dwarf of your station. I do not wish to be rude. Oh, well, you can just call me Lyra, if you would. As you wish, and thank you kindly. I am Sir Perth until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle, or perhaps I would be dead. Ah well, with a Grey Warden aiding our defense, perhaps all is not lost. Have you considered using the oil in the village store? No one told me of this. Oil, you say? How much exactly? Enough to set many monsters aflame. Assuming that would hurt them. Yes, I see what you have in mind. That might be effective, if used carefully. Yes, excellent idea. I'll send some men to collect the oil. We'll use it to slow these creatures down. Have you anything else to ask me in the meantime? Is there anything I can do to help? We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. Hmm. Well, I'll see what I can do. That gladdens my heart to hear it. Uh, I just have a couple questions before I go. Ask me whatever you wish. Tell me about what's happened here, exactly. You know about as much as I do. I returned a day before the attacks began, having heard strange rumors about the abandoned castle. I was the only knight to survive the first attack. Since then, I found others returning from the Arlesa's quest. Until we get to the source of this evil, though, I do not think it will stop. And I don't believe we will be enough. Tell me about this quest for the Sacred Urn. When the Isle fell sick, we were at a loss. Nothing worked to cure him, and he just kept getting worse. Finally, our lesser Isold came up with a plan. The Urn of Sacred Ashes is a legendary artifact said to hold great healing powers. If found, it might save him. According to the legend, the followers of Andraste brought her ashes back to Ferelden to hide them from the Imperium. We knights volunteered to seek it out. Few of us have returned. Many are still out there, unaware of what is happening here. So, just what is the Arl sick with? We were never certain. He thirsted for water and then grew weaker and weaker. He brought in a mage, but even that did nothing. The Arlesa believed he was cursed and that we needed the power of Andraste herself or he would surely perish. Why did the Arlesa believe anyone could find the urn? The Arl once employed a scholar, Brother Genetivi. He had proof the urn was in Ferelden, or so I was told. Can no one find the other knights and bring them back? Eventually, perhaps. The ones I have here were those near enough to recall within the last few days. I only returned myself because I was passing by Raycliffe and heard the news of strange attacks. So the knights left the castle defenseless? Not at all. A great number of soldiers remained in Castle Raycliffe. I wonder if they perished there and were transformed into these... things. The thought chills my blood. Well, perhaps you can tell me something. As you wish. Uh, I have some questions for you. Ask me whatever you wish. Are there any supplies that I need to get in town? I'm not sure. Murdoch mentioned a blacksmith in the village, but I believe the militia is using everything he had. Beyond that, you might try the village store. It's locked up, but there may be items of use still within. I do not know. What about the tavern? Ugh, a fellow named Lloyd runs it. He refuses to close and evacuate to the Chantry. I suppose he might still have something to sell you, though I wouldn't encourage dealing with a fool. He's a profiteer and nothing more. All right, carry on. 
As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. We've learned our plan. Let's go check out this Lloyd fellow. I am ready. Where's the tavern? Hello there, friend. Can't say we've ever met before. Stranger to the village, I take it. Haven't had many travelers lately. All this nonsense is bad for business. Bet you regret coming, yes? Uh, let's just do business. Right. I've got some supplies, too, in case you're interested. With the store closed down, it doesn't hurt to pick up some of the slack, eh? I can't believe Lloyd won't even give us some free ale. A time like this, and all he thinks about is turning a profit. Did you expect any different? That bastard's always been cheaper than an antique from the hall. Here we are defending the village, and he don't even have the decency to help us out. Hmm. Maybe he should help defend the village instead. Ha! I've seen Lloyd handle a sword. He should stick to something he knows about, like keeping me nice and drunk for the fight. Lloyd is charging us for coin we don't even got anymore. Nobody's working right now. We're all just trying to survive. Ah, uh, what difference does it make? He won't care. Sorry. Turn around. Hey, what can Lloyd get you? I hear you're charging the militia for ale. Why shouldn't I? They may not have much coin, but I'm not giving it away for free. Think of the goodwill you'll earn. Goodwill? Bah, I prefer the good gold, that's what. Hmm. Their money won't help you if you're dead. Hey, there's no need for that kind of talk. That's murder. Fine, have it your way. Something else I can get for you? Answer a few questions for me. Fine. Make them quick. Why are you still open? I'm not abandoning my tavern because of a few monsters. The second I'm in the Chantry, Murdoch and his men will be here drinking all my ale. Well, shouldn't you be helping defend the village? Why? When them creatures attack, I lock myself in the cellar, just batten the hatches and wait it out. What's the point in getting myself killed with all the rest of them? If that makes me a coward, then I'm a coward. Definitely makes you a coward. You know what? Either die fighting in the militia or die now. Your choice. You're not gonna murder me in my own tavern. I'll take my chances. Maybe so, 
Lucky you, I'm not an evil creature. But unlucky you, I am. But Van Tegen said we didn't have to. He said, he said... Ah, fine, fine, I'll go. I approve. All who are able should fight. But all of this better be here when I get back. I don't want the place drunk out from under me. Blasted bloody... I see you got that bastard Lloyd to join the militia. It's about time you did something to help out. I guess this puts me in charge. <laughs> Poor Lloyd will have an apoplexy just thinking about it, eh? So, could you serve the militia ale for free? <laughs> Lloyd wouldn't care much for that. It's an excellent idea. You hear that, boys? Drinks for the militia are on the house. Ha! <laughs> You're the best on! You just... Keep us all safe, boys, and stay alive. Shouldn't you be in the Chantry, though? When I lock up the tavern later on, I will be. Are you fighting tonight? Yes, I am. That's good to hear. I didn't know that. And I noticed an elf in the corner. Do you know anything about him? Is he in fighting shape? Not much. He's very quiet. Says his name's Beric and he's here to meet his brother, but I think he's lying. He's a bit... creepy. Mm. Well, I'll should go then. Keep safe and come back any time. I won't lock up until near sundown. Not looking for company. I hear you're Beric. What? How did you know that? Uh, well, that's my name. Why? You seem awfully nervous. Why is that? I... no reason. I just didn't know how you knew my name. That's all. I asked around. Oh, I guess that, uh, makes sense. Look, you're very pretty and all, but I was told to... Uh, just leave me alone. What do you mean? What were you told to do? Nothing. Nobody told me to do anything. Just because you're a Grey Warden doesn't mean you can go around threatening people. I didn't threaten you. It'll just be easier if you tell me what you're hiding. I don't want trouble. I... I'm going to the Chantry now. Just leave me alone. Stop right there. Answer my questions, or else. All right, all right, I'll tell you. Just don't hurt me. This is more than I bargained for. Look, they just paid me to watch the castle and send word if anything should change. But they never said anything about monsters. I haven't even been able to report anything since this started. I'm stuck, same as you, I swear. Who are they? Who hired you to do this? A tall fellow. I forget his name. He uh, said he was working for Hal. Arl Rendon Hal. He's an important man, Terran Loghain's right hand. So I didn't do anything wrong. And what are you supposed to watch the castle for, exactly? Just to report any changes, honest. All I could send word about was the Arl getting sick. After that, monsters started coming from the castle. So you know how this happened? Tell me. I don't know anything about these creatures. When the Arl got sick, I got scared that people would think I was involved. But I swear I don't know anything about it. They sent me to watch. Maybe they knew the Arl would get sick. I don't know. How do I know you're telling the truth? Here. This is a letter from them. It has instructions and everything. Keep it. Do whatever you want with it. I just thought I was serving the king and making a bit of coin on the side. You have to believe me. I think you should help defend Redcliffe tonight. You're here, able-bodied. Fitting. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Thank you for your mercy. I won't forget it. What can I get you? 
I need some supplies, please. Fair enough. Let me see what Lloyd stored in the back. You can help yourself. These humans don't know the hilt of a sword from a pointy end. This ought to be interesting. These humans don't know the hilt of a sword from a pointy end. This ought to be interesting. Well, I'm here. I'm cold. I'm certainly gonna die. Hope you're as amused as Murdoch is. You were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. Just stay safe, both of you. The Maker sent you. I just know it. Thank you again. You are of dwarven blood and a stranger amongst us, yet you defend a home that is not your own. We are grateful for that. I cannot stand by while monsters attack the helpless. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a woman of worth, and the Maker will smile upon you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. How awful this must be for you all. Is this everyone who's left? All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? Just how safe is the Chantry right now? It is the sturdiest building in the village. The women, elderly, and children will stay here during the battle, while the militia and knights protect them. They set up a barricade outside the Chantry to keep monsters from getting inside. If anything gets in, Van Tegan is our only defense. Please, have mercy. Help these people. Do whatever you can. Well, Sir Perth needs holy protection, he says, for his knights. I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. Can't you just bless them? I can pray with them and give them my blessing, but Sir Perth wants me to call upon the Maker to shield them from evil. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you know. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. But if they think it helps them... I cannot do it. I know that their own faith may inspire them, but these men need to find confidence on their own. I, I simply won't lie to them. Now, please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. Yes. Oh, all right, then. As you wish. What is it you need, child? I guess I should go. May the Maker watch over you, child. Hmm. 
I hear you got the tavern serving the militia free ale now. While I don't favor my men being drunk come sundown, I suppose it helps morale to have their minds taken off. What's to come? You have my thanks. Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll inform Bantigan the militia is ready to fight. We'll give those bastards a welcome they won't soon forget. We're not only ready, Murdoch. We're going to win this. We'll do our best. We'll fight until we can't fight anymore. However long that is. So how is morale now? The men's spirits are high for now. Far better than I expected, to be honest. Dwin's presence makes the men a bit more confident. It helps to know a veteran is on our side tonight. My men are getting free drinks at the tavern. I suppose it's better to drown your fears rather than go mad waiting for certain death. I'm tempted to have a few ales myself. Since you convinced Owen to start repairs, we're pretty well armed now. That is a relief, let me tell you. Overall, I'd say the militia's very ready to fight. Never thought I'd say that, but there you go. Is there anything else? I'll be back. I just need to check on one more thing. I have a good feeling about tonight. I guess I don't want to leave Sir Perth waiting, so I'll go tell him. But Mother Hannah was a jerk. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. You said you wanted holy protection, yes? Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? I'm sorry, but Mother Hannah does not believe she can help you. I see. Then I suppose we must simply rely on our own prayers. The Maker will not help us. Thank you for your efforts. We shall fight on, nevertheless. And what is your status now? We retrieved more oil from the village store. It is ready to use as our first line of defense, as you suggested. Overall, my fellow knights are nervous about the coming battle. Death is almost certain, but we will fight and die valiantly if that's what the Maker demands. Well, I'm ready to take my stand here then. There is still time before the sun goes down. If you have not yet spoken to Murdoch, or if there is anything you have planned... I believe that's everything. Let's wait for nightfall. Good luck to you then, and may the Maker watch over us all. men know that we fight for the maker and our hour light the traps burn these foul creatures
They're attacking the barricades! We need help! Knight, stay here and guard the path. Come on! We need to hurry! arrives and we survive the night. We are victorious. And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, dear lady. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. I was happy to help defend the village. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Murdoch of Redcliffe, Mayor and beloved father, we salute you. Oh, you and so many others who have perished here, walk with he who is your maker. 
Long may you know the peace of his love. With the Maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. Vashadan. There's some magic afoot. Indeed. Odd how quiet the castle looks from here. You would think there was nobody inside at all. But I shouldn't delay things further. I had a plan. To enter the castle after the village was secure. There is a secret passage here, in the mill, accessible only to my family. That's convenient. Perhaps I should have gone into the castle earlier, but I could not leave the villagers. Maker's breath. Tigan. Thank the Maker, you yet live. Isold. You're alive. How did you... What has happened? I do not have much time to explain. I slipped away from the castle as soon as I saw the battle was over. And I must return quickly. And I... need you to return with me, Tigan. Alone. Yeah, we'll need a bit more of an explanation than that. What? Uh, who is this woman, Tigan? You remember me, Lady Isolde, don't you? Alistair. Of all the... Why are you here? They are Grey Wardens, Isolde. I owe them my life. Pardon me, I... I would exchange pleasantries, but... Considering the circumstances... Please, Lady Isolde, we had no idea anyone was even alive within the castle. We must have some answers. I know you need more of an explanation, but I... I don't know what is safe to tell. Tigan, there is a terrible evil within the castle. The dead waken and, and hunt the living. The mage responsible was caught, but still it continues. And I think Connor is going mad. We have survived, but he won't flee the castle. He has seen so much death. You must help him, Tigan. You are his uncle. You could reason with him. I do not know what else to do. What about Arl Eamon? Is he still alive? He is. He's being kept alive so far. 
thank the Maker. Kept alive? Kept alive by what? Something the mage unleashed. So far it allows Eamon, Goner, and myself to live. The others were not so fortunate. It killed so many, and turned their bodies into walking nightmares. Once it was done with the castle, it struck the village. It wants us to live, but I do not know why. It allowed me to come for you, Tigan, because I begged, because I said Connor needed help. Do you think this evil could be some kind of demon? I... I do not know. Oh, Maker's mercy. Could it truly be a demon? I, I can't let it hurt my Connor. You must come back with me, Tigan. Please! Tell me about this mage you mentioned. He is an infiltrator, I think. Uh, one of the castle staff. We discovered he was poisoning my husband. That is why Eamon fell ill. Eamon was poisoned? He claims an agent of Terran Loganes hired him. He may be lying, however. I cannot say. Why do I get the feeling you aren't telling us everything? I... I beg your pardon? That's a rather impertinent accusation. Yes, and I meant it that way. An evil I cannot fathom holds my son and the husband hostage. I came for help. What more do you want from me? Tigan, I do not have much time. What if it thinks I'm betraying it? It could kill Connor! Please come back with me. Must I beg? So why must Tegan go alone? For Connor's sake. I promised I would return quickly and only with Tegan. Tegan, I know you could order your men to follow me when I return to the castle. I beg you not to. For Connor's sake. Enough questions. We need to decide what to do. The king is dead, and we need my brother now more than ever. I will return to the castle with you, Isolde. <gasps> Thank the Maker. Bless you, Tegan. <gasps> Bless you. This seems like a mistake. I mean, you're going to get yourself killed. I cannot let Isolde return alone. Perhaps I can help Connor or Eamon. Perhaps this is really a trap, but this is my family. I must try. I have no illusions of dealing with this evil alone. You, on the other hand, have proven quite formidable. Isolde, can you excuse us for a moment? We must confer in private before I return to the castle with you. Please do not take too long. I will be by the bridge. Here's what I propose. I go in with Isolde, and you enter the castle using the secret passage. My signet ring unlocks the door. Perhaps I will... Distract whatever evil is inside, and increase your chances of getting in unnoticed. What do you say? Hmm. What exactly am I supposed to do in there? I wish I knew. I don't know any more about this evil force than Isolde seems to. Sir Perth and his men can watch for danger at the castle entrance. If you can open the gates from within, they can move in and help you. I don't think there's anyone else who can help you. If you choose not to go, then it's up to me to do what I can. Here is my signet ring. It will open the lock on the door in the mill. Whatever you do, Eamon is the priority here. If you have to, just get him out of there. Isolde, me, and anyone else, we are expendable. I don't believe that. I will rescue you all. I, or at least I'll try. I promise. You're a good woman. The Maker smiled on me indeed when he sent you to Redcliffe. So we are just going to send him with that woman? It seems so dangerous. But I can delay no longer. Allow me to bid you farewell. And good luck. to now.
A tunnel that went under the entire lake. Who would build such a thing? Yes. Is there anyone alive out there? Wait, you don't look like the Arlesser's guards. Are you from outside the castle? Are you the mage Lady Isolde mentioned? You've spoken to her? Then you know what I did. She said you poisoned the Arl. I'm not proud of my deed. Poisoning Arl Eamon was what I was hired to do. Lady Isolde had no idea when she took me in to tutor her son, of course. And what about all these walking corpses? I... I know it looks suspicious, but I'm not responsible for the creatures and the killings in the castle. I was already imprisoned when all that began. At first, Lady Isolde came here with her men, demanding that I reverse what I'd done. I thought she meant my poisoning of the Arl. That's the first I heard about the walking corpses. She thought I'd summoned a demon to torment her family and destroy Redcliffe. She... had me tortured. There was nothing I could do or say that would appease her. So they left me to rot. Why did the Arlesa hire you to tutor her son? Lady Isolde was looking for a mage to tutor Connor secretly. Terran Loghain found out and he sent me. I was to use the opportunity to poison the Arl. I was told that Arl Aemon was a threat to Ferelden, that if I dealt with him, Loghain would settle matters with the Circle. You see, I'm a Malificar. A blood mage. You? A blood mage? Truly? I would never have guessed. A blood mage? Well, that isn't good. I dabbled in the Forbidden Arts, and they condemned me to death for it. I thought Loghain was giving me a chance to redeem myself. But he's abandoned me here, hasn't he? Everything's fallen apart, and I'm responsible! I have to make it right somehow, I have to! Why did the Arlesa need a mage to tutor her son? Connor had started to show... signs. Lady Isolde was terrified the circle of magi would take him away for training. Connor? A mage? I can't believe it. She sought an apostate, a mage outside the circle, to teach her son in secret so he could learn to hide his talent. Her husband had no idea. How much magic did you teach Connor? Some. But he's still very young. He can barely cast a minor spell, never mind something more powerful. At least not intentionally. I have thought about it, and it's possible Connor could have inadvertently done something to tear open the veil. With the veil to the Fade torn, spirits and demons could infiltrate the castle. Powerful ones could kill and create those walking corpses. And Arl Eamon had no idea of his son's abilities? No, she was adamant that he never find out. She said that he'd do the right thing, even if it meant losing their son, and that infuriated her. I see. I think I understand. I never meant for it to end like this. I swear. Let me help you fix this. I say this boy could still be of use to us, but if not, then let him go. Why keep him prisoner here? Hey, hey, let's not forget he's a blood mage. You can't just set a blood mage free. Better to slay him. Better to punish him for his choices. Is this Alistair who speaks, or the Templar? I'd say it's common sense. We don't even know the whole story yet. He wishes to redeem himself. Doesn't everyone deserve that chance? Like yourself, you mean? Everyone deserves a chance to redeem themselves in the Maker's eyes. This man, no less than any. I don't know. He is a blood mage. But this is an unusual situation. Give me a chance, please. So how will you make things right? I... well, I'd try to save anyone still up there. There must be something I can do. And after that, what happens? Afterwards? I assume I'll be arrested. Or executed. Or whatever people like me get. I'm tired of running from the Circle. I need to account for what I've done. That's commendable, if it's true. I'm glad you think so. So what now? I'm letting you out. Don't try anything. 
You're letting me out? And what then? You come with me, that's what. I'm not sure that's a good idea. I'd like to help out, but I'm not so sure I want to follow you into danger exactly. Fine, then help. Just don't make this worse. I won't, I promise. I will find a way to fix this somehow. I am ready. And I'm off. All right.
I'm not going to hurt you. I... I'm sorry. I'm so frightened. These monsters are everywhere. My... My name's Valena. The Arlesa's maid. Is she... All right. What happened to everyone? Valena? The Smith's daughter? You know my father. I want to go back to the village. Is there a way out of here? There's a tunnel leading out in the dungeon. But... But the monsters... I've already killed most of them. It's safe, if you head that way. I'll find my way. I can run fast, and I know the castle. Thank you.
You have opened the gates. That is good. My men and I are eager to see our Arl again. Shall we enter the main hall together? It must be held if we are to regain control of the castle. Yes, let's go to the hall together. Excellent. Let us go now, then, and see what awaits us there. are our visitors. The ones you told me about, Mother. Y yes, Connor. And this is the one who defeated my soldiers. The ones I sent to reclaim my village. Yes. And now it's staring at me. What is it, Mother? I can't see it well enough. This is a dwarf, Connor. You... You've seen dwarves before. We've had them here at the castle. Have them? For dinner, maybe. Looks like a tough chew. Maybe in a nice stew. <laughs> Shall I send it to the kitchen, Mother? Connor, I beg you. Don't hurt anyone. Ma Mother? What? What's happening? Where am I? Oh, thank the Maker. Connor? Connor, can you hear me? Get away from me, fool woman! You are beginning to bore me. Maker's breath. What has happened here? Grey Warden, please don't hurt my son. He is not responsible for what he does. So he is the evil force you spoke of. No! Don't say that! So, the boy has become an abomination and sundered the veil. Connor didn't mean to do this. It was that mage, the one who poisoned Demon. He started all this. He summoned this demon. Connor was just trying to help his father. And made a deal with the demon to do so? Foolish child. It was a fair deal. Father is alive. Just as I wanted. Now it's my turn to sit on the throne and send out armies to conquer the world. Nobody tells me what to do anymore. Nobody tells him what to do. Nobody! Ha 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 ha! Quiet, Uncle! I warned you what would happen if you kept shouting, didn't I? Yes, I did. But let's keep things civil. This woman will have the audience she seeks. Tell us, woman, what have you come here for? I came here to help, if I could. To help me? To help father? To help yourself? Which? I want to help you, of course. I don't need help. I can do everything all by myself. Isn't that right, mother? I... I don't think... Of course you don't. Ever since you sent the knights away, you do nothing but deprive me of my fun. Frankly, it's getting dull. I crave excitement and action. This woman spoiled my sport by saving that stupid village. And now, she'll repay me. My mind is my own again. Blessed Andraste. I would never have forgiven myself had you died. Not after I brought you here. The fool I am. Please. Connor's not responsible for this. There must be some way we can save him. You knew about this all along. I... 
Yes. I didn't tell you because I believed we could help him. I still do. I'm sorry, my lady, but Connor has become an abomination. He's no longer your son. You! You did this to Connor! I didn't. I didn't summon any demon. I told you. Please, if you'll let me help. Help? You betrayed me! I brought you here to help my son, and in return you poisoned my husband? This is the mage you spoke of? Didn't you say he was in the dungeon? He was. I assumed the creatures had killed him by now. He must have been set free. He's no more to blame than you are, Lady Isolde. How dare you! If this man hadn't poisoned my husband, none of this would have happened. He should be executed. Your secrecy made his actions possible, Isolde. But I... I know what you must think of me, my lady. I took advantage of your fear. I'm sorry. I never knew it would come to this. Well, I shan't turn away his help. Not yet. And if Connor is truly an abomination... He's not always the demon you saw. Connor is still inside him, and sometimes he breaks through. Please. I just want to protect him. Isn't that what started this? You hired the mage to teach Connor in secret, to protect him. If they discovered Connor had magic, then they'd take him away. I thought if he learned just enough to hide it, then... Joanne, what can you add to this discussion? The demon in Connor needs to be destroyed. Killing Connor is the easiest way to do that, certainly. But there is another way. A mage could confront the demon in the Fade without hurting Connor himself. What do you mean? Is the demon not within Connor? Not physically. The demon approached Connor in the Fade while he dreamt and controls him from there. We can use the connection between them to find the demon. You can enter the Fade then? And kill the demon w without hurting my boy? No, but I can enable another mage to do so. It normally requires lyrium and, and several mages, but I have blood magic. What difference does it make here? Lyrium provides the power for the ritual, but I can take that power from someone's life energy. This ritual requires a lot of it, however. All of it, in fact. So, someone must die? Someone must be sacrificed? Yes, and then we send another mage into the Fade. I can't enter because I'm doing the ritual. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. It's not much of an option. No, it's not an option at all. I... I understand. I just... I disagree. I think we should do it. Let it be my blood. I will be the sacrifice. What? Isolde, are you mad? Eamon would never allow this. Either someone kills my son to destroy that thing inside him, or I give my life so my son can live. To me, the answer is clear. Blood magic. How can more evil be of any help here? Two wrongs don't make a right. It does seem like a sensible choice, with a willing participant. Connor is blameless in this. He should not have to pay the price. It... Uh, it's up to you, my friend. You know more about such things than I do, and it's your companion going into the Fade. The decision is yours. There must be another way to enter the Fade. You can find Lyrium and more mages at the Circle of Magi, if they would even do it. Circle Tower isn't far from here. I saw it on the map. That is an excellent point. One of the treaties is also for the Circle of Magi, after all. The tower is about a day's journey across the lake. You could attempt to get the Mage's help. But what will happen here? Connor will not remain passive forever. I think we need to take that chance. Very well. I will keep Jowan here as a precaution. He says he wants to help, so he will keep an eye on Connor with us. Go to the tower quickly, then. The longer you are away, the greater the chances of disaster. I do not like this talk of possessions and spirits and... and magic. It is unnatural. 